Hi, everybody. I'm Heidi Collins. Uh, new evacuations to tell you about in Northern California. Around 26,000 residents in Par Paradise, California, were told to leave. Wildfires moving closer to their doorstep. Next door in Concow, 40 homes were destroyed by fast-moving flames sparked by embers from another nearby wildfire. There are 330 active fires burning in the state right now from Santa Barbara County in the south all the way up near the Oregon border. Cal Fire officials say they have more than 20,000 people fighting those fires. got to tell you, we have been watching the devastating wildfires in California, and it made us wonder, isn't it early in the fire season to see so much destruction? What are we talking about here? Is this climate change? Is this global warming? There's the man to ask the questions of. Our uh, science, technology, environment correspondent, space correspondent, Miles O'Brien is here to <laughs> exploit it all. The, yeah, he's got multiple titles, sorry, Tony, multiple hats. We're out of time. I'm sorry. Hey, we're out of time. <laughs> got to go. All right. Hey, Miles, good to see you. All right. It's good to see you, Tony. Let's talk a little bit about this because wildfires, we, we can't, it's hard to make a, a connect the dots moment here in all this, but wildfires certainly would be a symptom of climate change. Let's go through some numbers very quickly. I know these charts will make your eyes glaze, glaze over, so I'll go as quickly as I can. This is 1860. This is the year 2000. This is the temperature trend on our planet. It's gone up by about one degree Fahrenheit. Take a look at the uh, chart of the, um, uh, really a map of the world, taking this information. And these are hot spots. Everything here shows uh, temperature anomalies, uh, changes in temperature. And as you can see where this kind of you know, tan or brown or whatever you want to call it, that orangey brown is, that's about a degree change in temperature. Okay, so let's move on. Now the question is, is climate weather? Climate is not weather. Climate is kind of like the operating system on your computer. Weather is the software. Hmm. The operating system can affect the software in unpredictable ways, as you well know. If we continue this analogy, if your software crashes, it could just be bad software or it could be something to do with the operating system. If you see a lot of programs crashing, you say, hey, maybe this is the operating system. And that's maybe why we're seeing a lot of this weird weather. Let's go to the fires now and okay, talk about great. this. Could they be a function of global warming? They sure could. Scientists at the Scripps Oceanographic Institute looked at this issue a couple of years ago in some detail. They concluded in the western U.S. since 1986, longer, warmer summers have resulted in a four-fold increase. Four-fold mm. of major fires, a sixth increase in the area of forest burn. That's compared from the 1970 to 1986 time frame. Now, wildfire frequency was nearly four times the average. Now, this is a lot of charts, I know, but take a look at this. Okay. This, these are the te this is the temperature line, this black thing right here, okay? And down here is the wildfire frequency, these little red lines. You'll notice there's a correlation between the temperature and the amount of uh, wildfires. This is something to do with the spring snow melt, which is a key here. Uh, yes, yes. If you look at the spring snow melt, down here is, uh, indicates an early snow melt. And when you have an early snow melt, it correlates with more fires. And that's an important point to consider because it provides more time, a longer period in which those ignitions could occur, greater drying of the soil and vegetation, and consequently, mm. not surprising that you would see that and that snow melt timing would have something to do with this. Now. Um, let's talk about um, this right here. Great. Uh, am I, uh, what is that? You, you still with me? Yeah, yeah. What is that? Okay. Well, this this uh, is an indication of what happens when there is an early snow melt. Mm -hmm. On this side, you're seeing the amount of rainfall, and what you see wherever it's orange is a deficit. So there's a big rainfall deficit. The lack of uh, an early snow melt creates problems with precipitation later, and this shows temperature changes. Everything that's in orange is abnormally high temperatures. So whenever you have that early snow melt, what you get are less precipitation and higher temperatures. Now here's uh -huh. an interesting little point about all of this. These fires themselves, Tony, create carbon dioxide. They create sure. yeah, greenhouse yeah, gases. Sense. We crunch some numbers in all this, and if you compare the amount of fires burning right now, which is about a half million acres, this shows the vulnerability uh, where some of the forests are most affected by all this. But if you crunch the numbers on all this, and you consider how much is burning now all over the West, it's about a half million acres. Well, it, that generates, uh, on average, um, uh, about the equivalent of 700,000 cars are worth of carbon me? dioxide over the course of a year. Yeah. So that would be like taking, if you could put the fires out, it would be like taking 700,000 cars off the road. Yeah. So it actually accelerates the process of global warming because trees, of course, capture carbon dioxide, and when they burn, they release it.
Let me ask something crazy here. You know, nature's been doing this, lightning strikes, whatever, for a gazillion years. Isn't it its, its own sort of natural pruning process? Uh, I know that we've got a hand in this, but this has always been the case. And there is an argument to be made that while the firefighters are going in and doing a, a valid job of of saving homes, that you know, we might be a little better off here if we would let more of these areas burn, Miles. Well, that is the interesting thing here, because as you know, as human beings encroach into these areas, yeah, 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 yeah. it becomes a very difficult thing. N the natural cycle... Yes actually over time decreases the size of the fires. You look down in Mexico, for example, where they don't uh, do as much suppression techniques. Yes. You don't see nearly as large a fire. What happens in our case, we suppress, we try to contain, contain, contain. That allows that underbrush to build up more fuel for the fires. Yes. So when yes. they happen, they're bigger. Absolutely. Miles, great to see you. Good to see you here in Atlanta. All right. And Rob Marciano standing by now in the Weather Center uh, to talk a little bit more about these fires because, mm -hmm. as we've been saying, we've been talking about it, it seems like for weeks now, so much heat mm -hmm. um, and, and more to come. Uh, you know, and it's, as Miles was saying, it's a very, very complex system. Yeah. The, the way the atmosphere and the, and the oceans and the environment and the ecosystem uh, works together. Uh, but the bottom line out west, at least right now, it's very simple uh, it's just hot. And uh, the